first thing I want you to do is uh, introduce yourself. Tell us how, how you started out, how you get to love being in the auto industry. I know that you're a motor car enthusiast. Yeah, so. well, I mean, love is a very strong word <laughs> to use for how I feel about the auto industry. <laughs> right, right, right. But go ahead, but, because I know persons who stay in it are the lovers of cars. That, that's what comes first. And, yeah. And the customer service grows on you, right? Of course. Yeah. Like, to be honest, um, I used to always just be in sales for like yeah. a good portion of my uh, career. As soon as I left high school, I just went straight into a sales job. Right. So uh, one day I was like, I was laid off the second time actually from a sales job. Cause you know okay. how they are, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So company wasn't doing too well, whatever. Laid me off, laid me off, and then I was like, you know what? I love cars, so let me just try to get into that, right? So yeah, you know, I started doing a co-op, and I was doing it through as a, at a side shop first, and then I went through Canadian Tire, and then one day, um, a position opened as a as an advisor. So I figured, let me just give that a shot, cause like I like being a, you know, I like being an apprentice but it wasn't uh it's like you know it's nice it's fun to work on your own car yeah but when you have to like you know work on somebody else's car when there's like time restraints and things like that it just it just it wasn't like really a passion for me so i decided you know what i i like cars you know i love cars and i i like talking with people and i like uh, communicating with people so you know an advisor would be a perfect position really yeah so yeah, I became an advisor at Canadian Tire, and then, yeah, and then that was it from there. Okay, okay, okay. But uh, at what age was this? You said um straight so, out straight out of high school. So when I when I left high school first, I was in sales, and I stayed there for like I was doing sales for a, a number of years. I didn't uh, start my apprenticeship until I was twenty four. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, like it wasn't. It just like the apprenticeship. Like it just wasn't for me, to be honest. And I liked I liked being an advisor. I decided to just continue with that instead. <laughs> but uh, you'd have made so much more if you were if you you know um, extended okay. that career into a mechanic and becoming a master technician. That's where the big box awesome. comes in. You know, honestly, and I thought about that too, and I always think about that too. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. but I, you know, it's just like at the end of the day, it's it's money, not really everything. You know, like the way I look at it is that. Like, you know, cars are very like, you know, it it takes a certain finesse to, you know, fix a car right and yeah. to fix it on time and things like that. And also to deal with it mentally as well, too. Mm-hmm. And honestly, like people are just easier to deal with than cars. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard I've never heard it from that approach before. But I mean, yeah. if you're a people person, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know. But like a car, you have to fix it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, right? See, so, so give us a little bit more from uh, from Canadian Tire. Where did where did you move on next? So uh, I was at Canadian Tire for um, about a year. T- no, about two years. I was at Canadian Tire, and then I moved to uh, to Volkswagen. Okay. Um, I was at Volkswagen for a number of years, and then they went through the whole diesel scandal. Oh and everything. yes, yes, that yes, was all yes, going on. yes. So, yeah, so the was, scandal, like, yes. Yeah, yeah. So when I was working there, like uh they're going through the whole mission scandal and everything. So um after the whole scandal, it was like working at Volkswagen, you're constantly trying to just prove yourself to them that yeah. you're not scamming them. Because most people mm-hmm. just they didn't understand the whole emission scandal, you know, they just they just assume, oh, we're as a customer, I'm just getting scammed by Volkswagen. You know what okay. I mean? Yes, yes, yes. It uh, so, left a bad taste in a lot of customers' mouths. Exactly. Right? So and you they know what to do? They had you had to be doing a lot of damage control. Exactly, exactly. And it would be like from you know somebody first walks in the door. Oh, like you know, especially if they had a diesel. You know, they walk through the door, and you gotta raid a raid a red carpet for them. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, the whole has. How has operations changed since you first started out um, along that journey? What were some of the changes you saw? So to be honest, like um, a lot of the drastic changes already kind of taken place when I entered the industry already. Uh So it's 
so it's hard to really comment on that but like what i could say is that towards the ending of you know of i guess my automotive career you would say like um it just became um more and more again like even though i was working at a different brand it just became more and more again of trying to convince people that you know you're not trying to rip them off or mm -hmm. things like that it's it, it it didn't become about the cars it was actually more about the customer service and more about the people right, versus right. fixing the cars itself yeah because you are you are the bridge between the service department the parts department and the sales department because uh customer satisfaction you have to be exhuming that at all times yeah but at, the, but at the same time no you have to also exercise and increase the the customer retention rate yes yeah and i feel like nowadays it's a lot more important like you know before like okay so there's so many shops around now right yes, everywhere you go definitely yeah the competition the competition is yeah. high yeah competition so high now so it's like you have to really really stand out for you know your customers to want to come back right because if it's mm -hmm. about money like and you can always find somebody that's willing to do it cheaper right yeah 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 definitely so what were what were some of the biggest challenges you encountered while you were um an advisor because i mean that's your passion as well but you must have come across a lot of convince you know try to convince yes. people i <laughs> yeah, mean in terms yeah. of some of the upselling strategies you have to use to you know make the numbers because of course you know the numbers are very important but what right. what yeah what were some of the challenges um, you encountered well okay so number one it's like in this industry you can't really you know like the way i look at it is like i'm not, i wasn't ever in the industry to rip people off mm -hmm. but i always felt like i was like you're always trying to prove that you're not trying to do that again you know yes, yes and like to be honest i feel like with me a lot because i was a younger guy that a lot of times especially when i was working at canadian tire they would think i was just trying to rip them off like all mm -hmm. the time like and i you know i would tell people that you know if i was in that business i wouldn't be in the automotive industry because it would actually be really hard to do that in the automotive industry yeah. because everybody has their defenses up realistically. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, I feel like, um, I feel like that's a lot of, that's something that I dealt with a lot. And then like, you know, it's trying to convince older people too, mm -hmm. or like trying to show them that maybe what they, what they know isn't as correct as what they yeah. might think. Yes yes so because they some of them yeah. already come with the pre preconceived notion that exactly. they have a certain amount of money to spend exactly. but when you yeah but when you diagnose the car then yeah. you realize that a b c d e f g <laughs> right um a lot more things need to be need to needed to be done exactly and now so, like and now some kid is telling you that yes <laughs> exactly exactly so you know how do you convince someone much exactly. older than you are yeah they, they, yes. exactly so that so what the one way i worked around it is just knowledge knowledge is mm -hmm. power really and truly like i even to this day like even though i'm not in the industry anymore i'm constantly interested in the automotive industry i'm constantly watching videos doing my research like just outside of the training that we used to do and things like that because it's always good to arm yourself with knowledge right yeah yeah so and that was that was one big thing that i that i strived on and especially because i worked in the back as well too so it was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah you have a knowledge of what of what going uh, what's going on at all times yeah exactly but tell us tell us tell us a little bit more about your your dealership experience um how was it overall uh like okay so i don't to be honest it was it was pretty good like yeah. from from what you're told and from what you know you know when i was at canadian tire they used to say oh yeah the dealership is you know you don't want to work at the dealer like mm -hmm. they're going to take advantage of you they're going to do this they're going to try to make you uh sell things that you don't need to sell like it's all about numbers like they put all that in your head right yes yeah then 
when you actually go there, you, you realize that it's the complete opposite. The dealership is actually more about the service, the customer service. And yeah. like, yeah, they're about the numbers and things like that. And yeah, of course we have to, you know, every business you have to hit numbers, but mm-hmm. like how you're hitting it really is what separated for me is what separated like a small shop versus the dealership. They were more integrity. Like there was more integrity yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, like as an employee in the dealership, it was very uh, interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was a good time, though. Like honestly, I can honestly say it was. It is a good time working. It was a good time working there. Well, of course, the dealership presents itself as the the standard, right? Yeah. And it is their duty to train their employees at a particular level to get their competency up because they want everything to be above board at all times, right? So the the image is there and they have to try to maintain that image. But at the same time, no. What was was your perception after after going through all that? So now here's the thing. It's like, yes, they they advertise the... You know, the professionalism, the top notch uh, technicians, things like that. But it's like Mm -hmm. after you work in the dealership, you kind of realize that a lot of that's just kind of not to say it's not true, but Mm -hmm. it's 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 a bit of an extension of the truth. Like, to be honest, you know, it's all the same type of people working everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the difference between a tech that's been at 30 years at like I say, a Canadian tire or a smaller shop versus something at the dealer. Yeah, their knowledge might be a bit different, but the integrity is kind of the same, right? Yes, yes, like yes. If somebody's been in the industry for so long, their integrity is going to be just as well as somebody else at the dealership, you know? Yes. But I feel at the dealership, they try to really kind of push that. Like, yeah, you know, we're here to, we're here for the customers first type of thing. Mm-hmm. But I mean, again, at the end of the day, it's it's always a business, right? Well, of course. And they right. they have to be above board at all times, depending on yeah. who is in charge, of course. Because, yeah. as you know, brands exactly. differ and mm-hmm. dealership operations differ depending on the, the, the model that you're actually selling and yeah. servicing and recommending to your friends and family. But um, what... Since you've been in it and you've seen the changes, you've experienced the changes, what would be some of your recommendations um, to dealerships? Training. big A big thing would be training. And not yeah. training as in, you know, you got to sit on a computer and go through all your courses and just click through everything. Mm-hmm. Like actual proper training. Like, like I always find it, you know, so surprising when I call a dealership. And I ask them like, you know, questions about any of the services and whoever picks up the phone, like, you know, if you're picking up the phone in dealership, you should at least have some kind of knowledge about something. Yeah. About every, at least some kind of knowledge about the department, or at least like if I, if I call a dealership and I ask somebody for an oil change price or like prices on like services, anybody mm-hmm. there should be able to give me that. Well, yeah, that is true. But you know currently, I mean? a lot of dealers are suffering from exactly. the, the, the shortage of knowledgeable people working in yeah. the dealership because yeah. the, the turnover is very high. Yeah, it is. And, and like, like, you know, like where, where I was, like I was one of the last advisors there for a good portion mm-hmm. for a good length of time. Yeah. Like while I was there, I seen so many people come in and out through the yeah. door. Yeah. And I was just yeah. in a short amount of time. Yeah. Like, and that, so I can that, imagine in a longer period, like how many people. Yeah. And that's a that's a reflection of the deal. Um the, the leadership, as a matter yeah. of fact. That is a reflection of a leadership. If there's no standard operating procedures there, and then yeah. there's no policy and guideline for everyone that it goes right across the board, then yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be lost because the leadership has to set the tone, right? Yeah. The mission, the vision, the values from which the um, the company itself strive on. But if they keep moving the goalposts and changing the rules of the game, people are just going to get frustrated and just keep on leaving. And yeah. that's, that's, that's commonplace in, in a lot of dealerships. Yes. Exactly. Based on like, my, so- yeah, based on my personal experience, but yeah. seems that you have, you have experienced the same thing as well. Yeah. It's like, soon as you get used to something, 
something changes. Something changes, yeah. And you have to readapt to it. But it's like, I get the forever changing thing. It's, it's good for that, you know, to always evolve. But sometimes it's like you have to at least, you know, start. You have to at least master what you're you are doing first before you try to move on to something move on else. To something else, yeah, yeah, that is so true. That is you so know? true. But in terms of the 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 market as it is right now, because you've seen so many models of different cars servicing um, the different features going through the garages and thing, how should we prepare for a market that is constantly changing? You know what? It's I think the people. I think as an employee, if you're if you're in the industry, like you should have enough passion to want to keep up to date with a lot of the new technology. Mm-hmm. Like I like to be honest, I don't think it's an industry for somebody to go in just as like oh I just I'm just looking for a job, right? Because it it does it does require like you know for a dealership to run really well, it does require more employees that are they're willing to make this their career right mm-hmm. versus somebody that's just they're working nine to five you know i'm just here to clock in clock out like somebody like that you know they're not going to go over their you know over and above to arm yourself with knowledge right mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. help them help themselves in the dealership unless the dealership is making them do that yeah and to be honest, like, yeah, you, you can make your employees do it too. But at the same time, it is on people as well too to kind of arm yourself with knowledge. Yeah, but there, there, there has to be some incentive for, exactly. for, yeah. Yeah, for the employee to be doing that, so going above and beyond. Yeah, and uh, that's what, what I was going to say as well too, is that if I'm doing that, like, it has to be worth it for me. Right. Like, if, if I'm, if I'm a, uh, as an advisor, if I know if I've been there for, you know, three, four years and I know everything in and out about the cars and I can diagnose things in the drive through and things like that before it even gets into the shop. If I'm able to do things like that yeah, and like, yeah, you should incentivize right for that, you know? Right. 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 But I think, yeah, that's one thing too. It's like, again, they're always looking for somebody to do something cheaper. Mm -hmm. And that that works with employees too. Yeah, but um, on the on the notion of in incentives, yeah, it has yeah. to be incentivized for the employee to put out the the extra effort. But at exactly. the same time, no, they have to the leadership of the company, the dealership, no, they have to do what you call it. No, they have to keep the employees engaged yes. at all times. Yeah. You know the buy-in principle, but. Mm-hmm um brand uh, as you and i know this the, the auto industry sometimes it's it's a uh, very unforgiving industry you yeah. you can put out a lot and then by the by the snapping of the finger right something happens whether by uh, economic turmoil or natural disaster or you know the, the current situation no um covid is upon us i mean yeah it's yeah, yeah. where it it's uh, we're the first to go right yeah and it's it's exactly. always the very first, one of the very first industry to be affected yeah and like again like with this whole covid thing it kind of really showed you it 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 showed you what you're worth for the employees for the company side you know right like you know me personally i felt like i gave a lot to the dealership when i was there and i felt like i was just kind of Okay, thanks for your time. Thanks for your service. Yeah. 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 Or if you're there and then uh it's you know, by the by the stroke of a button, someone just gets up and says, uh, we're moving in a different direction. (laughs) Yeah. And that's exactly that's yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've heard it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've heard it so often. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's that's the number. That's the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard it very often, very very often, Ryan. Um, but what 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 are you thinking about? Are you planning on going back into the dealership? I, uh... Um, to be honest, man, like I I have my own business now, so I don't really plan on going back in the automotive okay. industry. Okay. Like really? I I I liked it and I loved it for what it was, and it taught me a lot, and it taught me actually more about people than mm-hmm. about cars 
Okay. Right? Okay. Which is the funny, yeah, which is the thing. Like, I learned more about people working in, in that industry. But, um, yeah, it was it was something good, but I, I wouldn't be able to go back to it. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. It's just, I was just, it was nice and I love cars and I love do like I like cars. I always I was always love cars. But like working in that in that industry, it's it's not something for me anymore. One of the takeaways I got from it, and which is I which, which is why I have you here, is yeah. that it it develops us in terms of building customer relations. Yes. Right? So that was one of the, the, the biggest advantages of yeah. working in the auto industry, especially yeah. if you're on the front line. Yeah. Um, interacting with customers on a daily yeah, basis. The, your confidence goes up. Um, your knowledge base increases uh, a lot. You're more aware of what is going on in and around you in terms of general affairs and everything. So yeah, yeah it, it, it keeps you in tune. And like I said, if you're, it, if you're a people person, then it actually it comes naturally in the way you interact on a daily, on, on a daily basis. Yeah. It's it's very true, honestly. It's it's very true. Like that's um like working with uh with people and then trying, you know, it, it taught me a lot of um trying to see things from other people's perspective. Because yeah. you know, like prior to working in the automotive industry, you don't really realize how important somebody's car is. Yeah. Really, you know. And that that's something that's that it kind of taught me, like and to, to be more uh, sympathetic to people as well too. Right, right, right. Because yes, but, like, yeah, you're dealing with people of all walks of life, and yes. um, if someone comes in and their budget is tight, and you try to help them as much as possible, because at the end of the day, uh, it's people, and we all have our many differences and personal problems and issues. So you try to help them as much as possible and that's that's one of the biggest reward of yeah. working there because you get to you know put a smile on someone's face yeah. and they, they they genuinely like and respected the the fact that you made an effort to yeah. solve their problem yeah and you know what like there's like a handful of customers that you'll always remember obviously and like they would have been the ones that would make you know make it all worth it you know yeah at, at the end of the day you see you know mr whoever and you know you're like oh yes like like yeah i can you know i can talk to this guy for a bit you know it's a good mental reset or you know he's not going to give me a hassle or you know it's like he's going to leave there thinking like knowing that he got a good service and knowing that you did the best you can and he's not you know what i mean like they're yeah. not expecting anything more or anything less right Yes, yes, definitely. You mentioned earlier you were with Volkswagen and then you were with um, Toyota. But how, yeah. if I should, you know, um, tickle your brain a little, how would yeah. you compare both brands in terms of their operations? Or were the dealers uh, operated similar or was one more process oriented? What, what were um, the significant differences? It's actually, it was actually completely different, to be honest. Like in the way that, um, like not completely, okay. It was completely different in the back end, like when it came to like the paperwork and things like that and the processes, mm -hmm. but like in the front end, you know, like being an advisor at both dealerships was like the same thing, you know? Yeah. I went from Volkswagen and you know what, honestly, dealing with Volkswagen customers are a lot worse than Toyota. <laughs> one. Like, I'll tell you that much. Maybe you're giving uh, Toyota too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> so especially if you if you're you're dealing with the ones after the the diesel, yeah, it's like okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. On yeah, on that note, well, yeah. <laughs> but one thing is that um, okay, so the difference between both of them is like Volkswagen. You know, when there is a failure on you know, their, um, you know, engines or anything like that, it was like, you had to do everything to kind of get them to cover it or things like that. There was a lot more hoops and things to jump through. And like, it was, it was like everything that we did, we had, we had to double check it and triple check mm -hmm. it to make sure it was done properly. If not, 
like we would have to resubmit everything or it would just be a longer process. Toyota mm. to me was a lot more lenient and you're actually able to contact, um, you know, anybody that's higher up when you're working at Toyota a lot easier than when, when we were working at Volkswagen, to be honest. Okay. Like, it just felt like Volkswagen at the dealership was a lot less isolated from Volkswagen Canada. Mm hmm Versus like Toyota as a dealership felt like it's more connected to, you know, TCI or like anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 tend to to have that connection, and that is why yeah. that is why they were they they're among the the leaders in terms yeah. of the way they do things. Their processes are a lot easier, and they try yes. to make it as much as as lenient as possible because yeah. they understand the fact that dealerships move cars. Yeah right and customer relations customer retention and customer satisfaction is 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 key so mm. they have to try to assist the dealers as much as possible if the dealers yeah. don't, if the dealers are disgruntled you won't be able to to meet your numbers in terms of a manufacturing skill so i mean it's a it's a never ending cycle but... it is yeah and you know what like it's it's so much easier to when like to it was a lot easier at Toyota to get things done than it was at Volkswagen, to be okay. honest. So with Volkswagen, it was, yeah, it was just very like, it was either yes or no. That was it. That was it. There was no gray yeah. areas. <laughs> no gray areas. No gray areas. Just yes or no. That was it. And yeah, if you didn't like it, <laughs> then, like, I'm sorry. You know, there's there's not much we can do. Like we, no matter what we did to contact Volkswagen, right. uh, Canada, they would know. No. Nope. Well, uh, hopefully someone from Volkswagen Canada yeah. sees this and you know try to improve as much as possible. But honestly, yeah, because like yeah, it wasn't it wasn't easy working there because there was a lot of um yeah, it wasn't and the processes too. There weren't like at every Toyota, the processes are more or less the same. Yeah. At uh, at Volkswagen, no, every dealership had its own process. Own processes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Because they, they didn't have standard operating procedures. And that, yeah. is, that, is, that is a factor in terms yeah. of compliance. Compliance yeah. is also something that Toyota is big on, right? Yes. yes. And they will, yeah, yes. and they will, they will share the information in terms of be best practices right across the world. All you do is yeah. look, up, look at how, what another region is doing. Then you take that information, take it across, you customize it. Yeah. Right, you don't use everything, you customize it based on your market, your culture, yeah. your, um, the, the values and attitudes of the, of the customers that you're actually serving, and then you, you implement it. That's basically what it is, right? But I, well, I can't say much for Volkswagen, I've never worked with them. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, Ford is also similar to Toyota, they have yeah. they, they caught on, they have their one Ford. Um, vision that they spread across to all dealers. So they're also another, another, another very good one as well. I've worked yeah. with Subaru. Subaru has their processes. They're partially owned by Toyota. So yeah, the, the yeah. Processes, yeah, 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 the processes are similar. But hopefully, the they will improve as they go along because they exactly, right? the market you know, the market right now is not is not slowing down. Even though there's yeah. a pandemic, the market isn't slowing down. Electric vehicles are now here, so hopefully they'll they'll get to it. Yeah, it's uh yeah no the um yeah like this new shift of technology too it's uh it's pretty amazing like the things that cars come with now and everything so it's like i'm interested to see how things would play out in the dealership with all this new technology yeah. especially being on now the customer side right so like I would be interested in that. Like to see how <laughs> things, you know. oh, so so now you're on the other side. You go yeah, to I'm the, on the other side. No, so yeah. no, so no, you'll be able to scrutinize everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but it's you know, it's um it like we were saying earlier about the processes, you know, that is something that I think all companies should implement. Like all like many like auto manufacturers like have the same processes for all their dealerships i think that would actually streamline a lot of things yes 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 the the one that actually did it was toyota themselves they had the tps the toyota production system that yeah. a lot a lot of other manufacturers and and um and brands actually copied their system that is that is why they they are where they are right now but 
if you're not constantly innovating and improving your processes as you go along, then you're going to be left behind. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ryan, um, it has been a pleasure. Uh, I know it's yeah. late. I know you want to get into bed, but <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I want to, I want to thank you for taking the time out. It has been very, very educating, educational, educating, informative. <laughs> and I, I wish you all the best in your new endeavors. Thanks, right. Thanks, man. Um, of course, it will be more money in your pocket and you can buy a luxury VW or a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Hopefully they have their processes down by then. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, know that you'll be walking through the door and they'll they'll have to ponder to you right now. So. <laughs> but no, man, it's... Yeah, no, I appreciate you uh, having me on. Of course, of course. And uh, feel free, um, hit me up. And um, we can also, you know, if you have anything else to, you want to share with us, by all means, let me know and then we can make it happen. For sure. I appreciate okay. it, man. All right. Thank you for, thank you for, for coming on and uh, do have yourself a good night. Yeah, you too, buddy. All right. Take care.